Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. Today we're going to look at Microsoft's NetSH Trace utility or command and the Microsoft Message Analyzer very briefly. Uh, it's kind of neat for the people who don't know about this. It's a bit of an eye-opener. Um, it'll give you a lot more options when you troubleshoot and you'd like a trace file without having to install anything on your Microsoft operating system. So if you go to the command prompt in uh, some administrator is the best way to say it, right, or some kind of uh, elevated account, you can type net sh space trace space start and a question mark or the word help. And you get all the stuff that comes out, right? Uh, some of it may seem obvious to you and some of it uh, you'll have to play with to see what works best for you. So just a little bit more detail on these within the options. You've got things such as max size. This is the first one, I, I probably the main one I want to show you. The default is 250. Oops. So if you uh, don't type anything in and you omit the max size option, then it's 250 meg as your trace file. And it, it'll either stop or continually capturing depending on what you decide to do with the other options, right? But a couple of things. Number one, I strongly suggest max size, pick a low number like two or five meg when you play with it. And then when you get more comfortable and you know exactly what it's doing, then you can ramp it up, okay? Second thing, zero, no maximum. Do not do that, just don't. Um, I always used to say, you know, unless you know what you're doing, that sort of thing. But with packet captures, you never really know. So just avoid zero altogether, right? I'd rather you have like a gig trace file rather than zero and pretend that you think it's gonna be a gig. File mode circular, for people who know what ring buffers mean, there you go. And also the overwrite comes into play as well. So I'm going to leave the rest alone that you can just play with in your own time. Now when your capture is done, you end up with a capture file with an ETL extension and this cab files dot cab it's just the compressed file so you can open this up with any of your zip tools the favorite tool of the month i used 7zip and winzip any of those zip type tools even microsoft's extract command will extract this and there's a whole whack of files in there and for the people who want to go through them in the root folder you'll see something called report dot HTML and that gives you a whole bunch of information about the capture that you might want to reference okay Notes about capturing. So always run the command prompt as an administrator, right? I've said that already. Get familiar with the capture options, just as I said. And here's a big one. So traces from non-physical Ethernet adapters or interfaces might not be compatible with other protocol analyzers like Wireshark. A big popular one. I didn't put it on there. It just popped in my head. Wi-Fi is a big one. So if you do capture packets from your Wi-Fi interface, um, and then try to convert them into a cap file, which I'm going to show you in a second, uh, it won't go well. So you have to do a lot of stuff to make it work. So just kind of just be aware of that getting into it. VPN adapters, some VPN adapters don't like, you know, it doesn't work well either. And virtual or, or switch port interfaces aren't going to work well either. So just so you know, right? Always test your configuration options before trying it in a live environment. I say that about all, all tools. Do not save your trace files on removable media like flash drives, stuff like that. Don't do that. Just save it on your, your local drive, your local system, and then copy it over if you'd like. And same goes for network drives as well. And just an FYI, if you do close the command prompt, so you did something and you hit enter and you, oops, made a mistake. Well, I'm just going to close the command prompt and stop the capture. Well, it doesn't work that way. It'll just keep capturing based on whatever your max size value is. And hopefully it's not zero. <laughs> So you, to stop it, you'll see the command on how to stop a trace file in just a little bit, but um, it will just keep going. So closing the command prompt does not stop the capture. So let's do a simple example. Um, and again, I've done the command prompt stuff. I just pasted it into this just to make it easier on the eyeballs because the command prompt is always kind of hard for some people to see and read. This is going to create a 2 meg capture and then stop. So net sh space trace space start space capture equals yes. So I'm going to capture. And there's a trace file, location obviously. Try to avoid spaces, otherwise you get to put double quotes and all that nonsense in there, right? Uh, max size is two, so that's two meg, right? Two. And then the file mode is single. I want a single file. And there you go. You hit When you hit enter, the command prompt just comes right back. It looks like nothing happened, but it is. It's capturing in the background. To check your status, you just type net sh space trace space show space status. And it tells you it's running. It tells you the location. It tells you a few details about your trace file as well. 
Now when it's done and you type the same command, the show status command, it says there is no trace session currently in progress. That's also a good way uh, if you've been playing a lot with your system and you don't really know if there's one still running because you've got multiple things going on, you might want to just check to make sure that there are no traces running. And if they are, which ones are they and that kind of thing. So after you've captured the file, you end up with this ETL file in Microsoft Message Analyzer, right, that you can look at it. Now, I want to stop just for one second, and there's something I haven't really said, and that is, why are we doing this? Like, what's the point? Well, with Microsoft Message Analyzer, I get some additional information I don't get with other protocol analyzers, such as the process ID or the process name that sent that packet on the wire, as well as a whole bunch of internal things. Uh, within the machine or the system that I might want to reference when I'm trying to troubleshoot an application, right? So there's a whole lot of extra stuff in here. That's the point. Do not open the trace file, this ETL file in Wireshark, since it's not compatible in its native format. I'm going to show you how to convert that in a moment. You will see an error like this if you try to open that ETL file. And just be aware that if you did capture from a non-wired Ethernet port and you converted it and you try to open it, you might just see a blank screen. So that might happen as well. So when you do open this trace file in Message Analyzer, just wait, right? Because you wait for this session total number to pop up. And because sometimes it takes a while for it to grind through the packets. It might take up to a minute. So just don't be impatient. Just let it do its thing. Let it finish, right? And then when you do have that trace file opened in Message Analyzer, then you can go to File, Save As, and Export. So there's a couple of caveats here. Just please pay attention to that kind of stuff in case you are doing that. And it creates a .cap or cap file. And from there, you just go to Wireshark, open the cap file as you normally do, and you'll see all the trace, um, all the packets from that trace file. So if the Wireshark, um, I'm sorry, if the Microsoft Messenger uh, trace file had a whole bunch of internal stuff that I told you about, process names and all that kind of jazz, that all gets stripped out when you do the cap conversion right it's all gone but if you do find something in Wireshark because you may be more comfortable and familiar with Wireshark you can always reference that packet number that IP identifier something unique go back to the original trace and then you can actually find out what was going on in addition to the actual packets so I hope that helps have a good day